page 67 beautiful heaven I'm not gonna try and pronounce that other stuff I, I don't speak that I, I speak Kansan okay that's it in this one again six eight time it's lively we've had lively before we don't do lively you do lively I ain't doing lively and it's really mainly counting wise so we get more used to six eight time now it's a little more challenging here First off, the right hand is pretty much legato. It's slurred, connected, and the left hand is staccato. Well, that's always a challenge when one hand is doing one thing and the other hand is doing something else. Ugh. But you practice it and you'll get it. Talk about the right hand first. Uh, not a lot going on. You're starting out with the fourth finger on C. This isn't C major, by the way, but it has some accidentals in it. And you're fine until you get to the last measure of the first line. Because the note right in front of that was a thumb plated G. Now you cro cross over the thumb and put the third finger on the F. Okay? Not really a problem as long as you're aware of it. And they're circling the number to bring it to your attention that something's going on. Look out. In the second line, it's the same thing. In the second measure, you're crossing over the thumb to get the third finger on the F. Because you've been up here. Then in the in the third measure, the second line, you gotta cross your thumb under that F from before and to get the G. Alright? You just don't shy away from that. It's important you get it. Now a little bit about the rhythm that might throw you. Take a look at the first measure. And this rhythm happens in other places. You have a tied notes in there, okay? If I take out the tie and I just play all the eighth notes, it's this. If I tie the two A's together, like they say, it's this. I think playing it, I can, ah, but I just don't play it. I hang on to it for that long. Take a look at the second line, second measure. Right hand, you have a tied D's there, okay? So when you first do it, it might be easier for you to leave out the ties. Now I'm going to do the second and third measure because there's ties in both of those. So it's just play the eighth notes. It's when I put the ties in, I'm going to think play it. I'm just holding down the other one and I'm you get the idea, right? Type thing. You got tied notes down the last line too, or you know, was, they're all over the place. Just deal with it, okay? I put the metronome on 70, but it's beating eighth notes. In the left hand, you have the chords. Big deal. Now, you're accustomed to the 5-7 chord, I hope, because it's in the last measure of the first line. Well, surprise, the first measure of the second chord is also a 5-7 chord. Remember on a 5-7 chord there's actually four notes in that? Right? Most of the time we just leave out the D. Well, there they're playing the D instead of the B. That's okay. It's still a 5-7 chord, just so you know. Second measure's got the same one. And in fact, it's on the second line. It's in the third line down the left hand. You have the C chord. And then you have what's called a C augmented chord, where the top note goes up a half a step. Goes up. You have a G sharp. Got to move your hand into the fall board. It's to the F chord. It's, it's, we augment the top note. We augment it by raising it up a half step. We'll do more on that a little later. I'll give you six counts. Give us six counts. Let's play it together. Now, I'm assuming you've learned it. You can play it. Now you're just going to check to make sure that what you're playing is correct. All right, hands in position. Okay. One, two, three, four. Ready, go.
to rest. There's probably all kinds of recordings of this around, so you get an idea of what it is.